Here's an example where we can use array literals to combine, say, some test scores over multiple years. Here we might have uh, um, some scores from 2019, 2020, and 2021, and we want to do some analysis of these combined scores. And so what we could do is uh, join these together using array literals. So um, one of the first things we can do is to build a new tab. Um, I'll call this tab aggregate, and then let's build our array literal. So to build array literals, we use the equal sign and the curly brace. And then we look for our data set. And in this case, we'll go to 2019. And um, that's in the way there. So I'll just highlight this backwards uh, from D back to A. And when I come back here, I can see that my formula is A to D. Let's finish out with the curly brace. And as you can see, that just pulls back the array of data, A through D of 2019. Now to make this work a little easier, I'm going to um, highlight that and I'll go ahead and copy it. And then I'll go ahead and paste. And I'll separate this with a comma just to show you how that would work. I'll change this to 2020. And then I'll go ahead and put in a comma. I'll paste in and go 2021. And you'll see what happens. What I've done is brought back these three arrays and using the comma as the separator, it puts the arrays side by side. I really wanted to stack this data set. So instead of a comma, we use a semicolon and we need to change the other semicolon. There we go. And when we um, when we enter, now we have the data, but whoa, what happened? It looks like we've lost uh, data. Um, I, have a, I just see the first set of data. But if we select that top row and look at the count, we see there actually are 75 pieces of data here. And so what we have to do and what we realize is that because 2019, 2020, and 2021 all had a thousand rows, all the blank rows came back and they stacked on top of each other. So starting at row 1000 and row 2000, I do have the data that I expected to see. You have to be careful with this because this could be kind of tricky. You could delete all the extra rows on those data sheets, but then it wouldn't allow for you to grow. So instead, what we're going to do is wrap this new set of data. The, the array literal becomes our data set. Let's wrap that with a query. Put in our parentheses. This is now our data set wrapped in the array literal. Uh, then we will write our select statement. And we'll select everything where it looks like it's column A, so we're column A, where A is not null. Let's see what this does for us. And when we hit enter, whoops, we get an error, and it says there is no column A. So what we, uh, this is a case where we have learned that you don't use the column headers A, B, C, D. This is where you have to use the call one, call two, call three. So where call one, one is not null, and there, hey, there we go. Now we've pulled back our data set with the first 24 from 2019, and then we can see the next uh, set of students from 2020, and as we scroll down, we see the students from 2021. But we have header rows in the midst of each one of those, and I don't want the header row, so let's See what happens if we put in our zero to remove the headers. Well, as we've seen earlier on a lesson on using headers, it did not get rid of the header even though I told it to use a zero. So, and if we if, if we use the one, we see the headers uh, across the top, at least the first row where we see the score and, and grade level, but we don't on the second layers. 
So we still want to get rid of all those headers. And so the other solution that we have shown in the past and what we'll use here is to just collect the data from A2 to D. And when we do that, the query realizes that there is no header data and we actually now get the data set we were looking for, which should show us 72, um, 72 different uh, pieces of data. Um, now I'm going to grab the uh, header and I'll paste it in so I actually have the headers. And again, an example where we're using the headers and building our own headers and, and not, use, not getting any headers built by the query itself. And we can see we have successfully now combined our data into a single set. Now that I've combined the data, I'd like to uh, I'd like to do some uh, aggregation of the data with it. And I already have a, a sheet where I've got that. I'm going to copy a formula and we'll paste it in back on the sheet we're building, so that we can take a look at um, how this might work. I'm going to go ahead and paste that formula in, and then let's take a look at it. What we're doing here is we're querying A1 through D73. Selecting D, we're selecting the average of C, and then we're using a group label and format function so that we could um, go ahead and check out our data. And we can see that we have the right amount of data here, and we're looking at our averages for the grade levels and using all those other functions to clean up the data the way we want it to look. So if we didn't want to use the uh, label, we get the automatic output, which we don't like the looks of as well. So that's where we decided to use the label average. And if we didn't want to use the format function, this is the output and we wanted to clean that output up. So in those examples, we're just using uh, some of the extensive functions within query to clean up our data to get it to look uh, more the way we would like it to look. And in a sense, this uh, looks a lot the same way that a pivot table would look. And the nice thing about this uh, particular formula is that it could be used in multiple areas. But we could insert a pivot table and we can insert pivot table and we'll put it on this existing sheet. We'll just put it right here and go ahead and create. And we're going to take our, our uh, grade level for our rows and we're going to take our score as our values and then we want to switch that sum to an average. And now you can see we have the same data. Now in this case, we're going to have to drop the decimal points back and we can see we actually have the same data set with the pivot table as we do with the query. And in this case, we can um, take this formula, uh, one of the values of the pivot uh, the, the query formula is that I could take this formula now and I could put it back on 2019 and paste it because the data set is exactly the same and I could paste it at 2020 and individually look at those um, grade level averages for each year and then look at my aggregate grade level average um, using, using the query or using a pivot table, whichever you find handier. The pivot table, when you click in it, gives a, builds out that uh, extra space and you have to get rid of it. So again, using a query, we can build a uh, stacked set of data and then we can write some queries against that data to do some analysis.